Where do you get your inspiration for new models? Or where does the inspiration come from? Um, a lot of places. Um, we're lucky in that most of our uh, employees are musicians of some sort, or many of them. Um, certainly all the ones uh, that are involved in the design and marketing and all that. So we get a lot of ideas just in-house. Um, we're also probably unique in that Randy, our owner, um, and I guess you'd say chief designer, um, doesn't play guitar. And lucky for me, because <laughs> that's how I start work with him, he's a sax player and a flute player, um, although now he plays a lot of keyboards um, and you know, organ and piano. But basically, um, what we do usually is we will we'll kind of look at the marketplace and, and see a niche where we think we could bring something unique and, something that would be uh, you know new and so we start exploring and you know a lot of times we'll take something that we already have and chop it all apart um, and, and build upon that um, other times we'll start completely fresh and new like with the California Tweed you know although it shares some circuitry with even amps like our dual rectifier it's basically kind of new for us um, at least in, in the overall concept, you know, what well, it does share some circuitry. So there's just a lot of places we get inspiration from. Sometimes we'll hear a song, sometimes it'll just be like, oh man, we have this vision of this look, you know, there's some certain look. It's like, what kind of sound would go with that look? And then we'll start riffing off that. And, you know, we definitely, we put it through its paces. In other words, we might start with one thing, and we'll end up way over here, you know, on something completely different. Um, you know, our Fillmore was like that, where actually it was born out of the California Tweed, and then we ended up shelving the California Tweed and just working on the Fillmore for like a long, long time till we perfected that. Mm -hmm. And then we learned so many cool tricks out of the Fillmore that and then we came back and picked this California Tweed up again and started going for kind of something different than we started with on this amp. So. It, it can go any way, really. It's like a song, you know. You, you might see something, you might hear something, you might have a little lick. You know, I love that lick. Oh, that could be the hook, or it could be the verse. We kind of approach it that way a little bit, um, you know. So yeah. Doug, it's been a busy year, Boogie. You guys have released some incredible products. Could you give us a year in review? No problem. I don't know if they'll be in order, but I'll try. <laughs> um, so. Uh, we did the switching stuff, the AB switcher and the ABY, um, and those are really cool. We did the uh, Triple Crown TC100, um, and we were really anxious to get that out because you know that was actually the initial product, and it really has a, a giant girthy, thumpy feel. So we were really excited about that one. Then we followed it up with the um, Fillmore's, which, like I said before, kind of came out of the Cali Tweed, but then the Cali Tweed was shelved, and then we worked on the Fillmore's, and the Fillmore's are basically the, the, the boogie version of the Cali Tweed, so to speak. They go way farther in the gain direction. Um, they have a lot more uh, sounds and modes in them, but we tried to also keep them really simple and vintage-minded, so it's kind of like, you know, the, the next degree towards mainstream from the Cali Tweed. Um, and then we did the new, uh, let's see, uh, Impulse, no, not Impulse, what am I saying? Subway, uh, WD-800, and that was kind of our walkabout tribute update modernization project. Um, so we, we, we married the Class D power section, the 800 watt Class D power section to the walkabouts kind of preamp, uh, tube preamp, and that, that was a really fun project. We really had a great time on that one love the way it came out. Um, we did a whole bunch of new bass cabs um, and uh, I'm not forgetting anything. Um, the, oh yeah, can't forget this, uh, the Rosette Acoustic Amplifier. Um, I don't know if that fell within this actual calendar year, but that was a really fun project too, the Rosettes. We, uh, we've wanted to make an acoustic amp for decades, but um, you know, tube technology doesn't really lend itself great to the to the acoustic thing. It's too heavy. Um, you know, it can it can lean towards runaway feedback in certain frequencies. Um, so it wasn't until we got with Andy, um, who has helped us design a lot of our bass stuff too, Andy Field, and he um, he he offered us the uh, Class D power module for the Rosette. And so between him and us, it was a meeting of the minds, and we're really happy with the way that came out too feel that we brought like perhaps a more um, accurate version of amplified acoustic guitar.
so I think that's about it um, for, for the last 12 to you know 14 months I'm not exactly sure but. so we want to thank all you guys from Cosmo for coming by and sharing what we do and um, all your interest and support over the years and we just really appreciate you and all the people you reach out to and share what we do with you know so thank you guys long drive from LA we really appreciate it it's you guys don't realize it's like long drive for these guys <laughs> they're doing it tonight too so heads up you know thanks watch out Thanks again for hosting us. Yeah, it's great. Thank, thank you so much. much. Boogie! Boogie! Boogie. 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 Boogie.